In this video, we will learn how to access and use the simplest MOSFET model creator. This tool will allow you to create a simplest piecewise linear MOSFET model by using the device's datasheet. Or, if you do have a SPICE model of the device, you can also use this tool to fine-tune your simplest model that has been extracted from the SPICE model. Both scenarios will be discussed. Before moving on, I would like to mention that there is a license dependency. Those with pro or elite licenses will be able to utilize the digitized datasheet curve tool that is included with Symmetric Simplest. Those with classic licenses will still be able to use the tool. However, you will have to manually calculate the datasheet information. The first scenario we will look at is when you only have a datasheet available for a MOSFET. Now, before we get started, you will need to gather the necessary graphs from your datasheet and save them to your computer. The graphs you will need are the parasitic capacitance curves, the transconductance gain transfer function, and the body diode transfer function. Once you have those graphs saved, you can now launch the tool. To place a custom MOSFET model, you must use the part selector. In the part selector, open the discretes tree, then open the MOSFETs N channel or P channel tree and select the create from datasheet item. The dialog itself works in a left to right fashion. All of the information needed to create the model are inputted on the left hand side. And the right side will display the calculated results. The model parameters section located at the top right is a pass through. Any information located in this box will be directly passed into the simplest model. Let's begin by inputting our parasitic capacitances. So the first button I'm going to press here is the COSS. I'm going to come up to my data sheet curves, and this is where all three of my capacitances are contained. And this dialog is the digitized data sheet curves tool. It has detected my boundaries, which is nice. Press continue, and now I'm going to add points to, me, to my COSS curve, so that way you can digitize it. So that's this curve right here. And I'll just add points along it. And once I, it fits the shape nicely, I'm going to press continue. Now I'm going to put my horizontal and vertical axis limits. So my horizontal axis goes from 1 to 50 volts. And this is a logarithmic scale. My vertical axis goes from 0 to 1400 picofarads. And that is not a logarithmic scale. And I'm going to press complete. You notice this green button now. So this is, uh, it has all of the necessary COSS data. Next, I'm going to move on to the CISS. Again, it reads my boundaries nicely. So I hit continue. I'm going to now select add points, and I'm going to add points along my CISS curve, which is this one. Once I'm satisfied, I click continue. And it already knows all my information because I put it in last time. Now I press complete. And then finally, we're going to do the CRSS. And that's this bottom curve down here. And continue and complete. So now that we have all three parasitics, we are able to calculate our output capacitor, or excuse me, our parasitic capacitors. Now keep in mind, Simplest likes to use charge instead of capacitance. So we have gone ahead and calculated the capacitor values and then integrated them to get our charge, our voltage versus charge curves. And finally, we have then piecewise linear curve fit along those. We can actually see this information if we press the view buttons. Um, so this is the Q of the drain to gate, or Q of the drain to source, and the Q of the gain, uh, gate to source. If I press this QGS, we will now see our calculated curves in blue, this is capacitance, and there is a blue curve under there, but we are so nicely P 
piecewise linear curve fitted onto it, you can barely see it. And the red is our piecewise linear charge and the piecewise step capacitance. Next, we're going to need our transconductance gain. So we're going to click on this gain button. Again, now we need a new graph. So this is our transfer function here. And I'm going to, again, digitize the 25 degree C curve, which is this top one to the bottom one down here. So I'll add my points, draw along this curve, press continue. And now I'm going to need my horizontal axis is four volts to 10 volts, non-logarithmic. And my vertical axis is 150 milliamps all the way up to 40 amps. And that is a logarithmic. Press that and complete. And now we have our, our the green is good. Finally, we're going to do our body diode. That's going to be a diode. And again, we're going to do the 25 degree C, which is this bottom curve here. Press continue, and my horizontal axis goes from 0 0.4 to 2 volts, non-logarithmic, and my vertical axis is 0 0.4 amps all the way up to 55 amps, and that is logarithmic. So I press complete. Now that we have all greens over here, we notice we can now create this. So we've inputted all of our, our data sheet information. However, we now need to optimize our curve fitting down here. And we do that by manipulating the drain to source voltage and the drain current. If you look at the body diode, you notice we are trying to curve fit all the way up to 83 amps. However, in our circuit, this MOSFET will only see about 13 amps maximum. So if we now change this to 13, you'll notice we re-curve fit based on zero to 12, or excuse me, zero to 13 amps. And we can see that is here as well if we look at the waveform, and now it goes from zero to approximately 13. And then same with the drain to source capacitance. We are on, this MOSFET will only see about 12 volts, so we change this to 12 volts, and you can now see it has re-curve fit between zero and 12 volts. Last information we're going to input is our model parameters. Again, these are just pass-throughs, so I'm just going to give it a nice label. This is my custom FET. According to the data sheet, I've pulled that the RDS on is approximately 140 milli, so I'm going to add that. I'm going to leave the off resistance at 100 mega ohms, and I'm going to actually add a gate resistor into this, which is going to be 1.9 ohms. Now, of course, this could be added externally, but I'll go ahead and add it internally. Once I've inputted all my information, I go ahead and click the Create button. And now I can place my MOSFET. And I'll just go ahead and run this simulation very quickly to confirm that I have no errors. And there is my switching wave node. All right. The next scenario we would talk about is when you do have a SPICE model that you can extract into Simplest, but you'd like to fine tune that Simplest model. So what I'm going to do here is I have the IRF530 already extracted at a level two. I'm going to just go ahead and run a simulation so we have a baseline. And this is the output of the switching node here, this node right here. And what I'm going to do to bring up the custom simplest model tool is select the MOSFET, right click to bring up the context menu, and then select the edit additional properties item. So as you can see on the left, we have our all greens, meaning that we have a valid model. But what we want to do now is we want to come over here to the results and then be able to manipulate or turn off certain items. So what we could do is we could turn off the uh, drain to gate capacitor by using this drop down menu here and select disable. Notice it'll exit out. 
You can also do this with the drain to source capacitor. And you can also disable the body diode by clicking on this checkbox on the left hand side. As you notice, if you enable and disable different devices, an X mark will pop up over the device that is disabled. I'm going to go ahead and turn back on the body diode. And what you could also do is change it from disabled to be user defined. In this case, what you could do is man manually input your voltage versus charge values. But what I'm going to do for this specific example is I'm going to change the to the disabled option. I'm going to leave the on all of the model parameters alone. Uh, what I also am going to do is change this label from user label to, let's say, custom uh, IRF. And now when you're all ready, you can go ahead and hit create. And now you'll notice our MOSFET has the custom IRF label. And let's go ahead and now run, press F9 to simulate to see how it changes the model. And I'm going to zoom into one of these switching cycles. And actually, I'm going to zoom into the falling edge here. And now we can see that our new model without the drain to gate capacitor falls much quickly because there's no discharging of that capacitor. So to wrap this up, the custom simplest MOSFET tool allows a user to create a simplest piecewise linear MOSFET model by utilizing the digitized datasheet curves tool. It will also allow you to fine tune a MOSFET model that you have extracted from a SPICE model.